not from that is April, only the cross which comes from the book of 2 Timothy chapter 12, verse 12. I'll ask the studio team to project for us. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12. If we endure, let us read together. If we endure, we can do better than that. If we endure, Thank you. Clap for yourselves. I love appreciating people. Clap for yourselves. So, Paul was writing to Timothy while Paul was still in prison. He used to, Paul, we know that Paul was an apostle of Christ, but he wasn't a disciple of Christ. We know that Paul never went a journey with Christ. Paul never walked with Christ. But the rest of the disciples, those are the people who had walked a journey with Christ. Those are people who knew Christ, who Christ was. Those are people who knew each and every detail about Christ because they used to walk and live together with Christ. But Paul, he himself, while Christ was spreading his gospel, Paul was persecuting Christians. And it happens, it happens after Christ's ascension in the book of Acts, Jesus appears to Paul. And this is whereby we find that the life of Paul turns around and Paul turns from being a persecutor and starts being an apostle of God. And Paul had this great gift inside himself and Paul was, was more gifted in evangelizing the word of God. When we look even in the Gospels, not in the Gospel, but in the New Testament, the only books that were written by the apostles are very few books. But most of the books in the New Testament were written by Apostle Paul, who wasn't a disciple of Christ. But this guy had this encounter with Christ that really impacted him, that really changed his life, and this person was able to do great and mighty things, more than the people even who walked with Christ and who used to live with Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. And, Paul, and as Paul is evangelizing the word of God, Paul is not in good terms with the, with, with the Romans. Paul is not in good times with the government of that, of that time. And Paul was forced to be imprisoned. And Paul, while he was writing the, this book of 2 Timothy, he was acting as if he's passing the mantle next to this person that we call Timothy. And in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12, where the theme of the month comes, Paul tells, tells Timothy, if you endure, you will reign with Christ. If you endure, you will reign with Christ. Christ. And I like to tell you something. You cannot teach, you cannot be able to tell somebody something that you yourself have not gone through that particular thing. You cannot be able to teach a person how to drive a car while unfortunately you don't know how to drive a car. And when Paul was talking about endurance, when Paul is telling Timothy, if you endure, Paul was knowing that I am one of those who have endured in this world. I am one of those who have endured because of my faith, because of my ministry, and because of my service to God. Praise be to God. Paul is somebody who had really endured. And I like to remind you guys that Paul Alipitia Shida, this guy is a person who really suffered because of the faith that he had. Paul is, a, is, a, is among the characters in the Bible that truly really endured while carrying that cross of Christ. Paul was not suffering because of anything else. Paul used to suffer because of his faith in Christ, because he wanted to continue carrying the cross of Christ. That is why we find even during the first encounter of Paul with Jesus, Paul started by suffering. Praise be to God. Paul started by suffering. When he encountered Christ in the book of Acts, the first thing that happened to Paul, he went blind for three days. He's in that suffering. And Christ told him, you will find a person called Ananias who will come after three days. And Paul had to endure. Paul had to wait. He had to persist. He had to, he had to wait for Ananias to come so that he would regain his sight back. And when we read, in the, when we study the story of Paul, when you study the story of Paul, Paul actually is somebody, alikuwa mefika mahali and he had told God, Paul had a thorn inside his flesh. The Bible has not said well what, what kind of a thorn it was. But Paul used to suffer because of that thorn. And Paul prays to God, 
knowing that God will remove that thorn from his life. But God tells Paul, my grace is sufficient. Because the will of God cannot take you where his grace cannot sustain you. No matter the suffering that Paul used to, used to go through, one thing that Paul had is what we call grace. Praise be to God. Paul is a person, he's still, he's still writing the book of 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy. Paul is still writing these letters and, and epistles, trying to evangelize to the people of God. And at that moment, Paul is in prison. Even when he's suffering in prison, this guy is still trying to achieve the purpose that he was born to do. To achieve the mission and the vision that he has for the kingdom of Christ. Praise be to God. I will tell you that Paul suffered. By the way, do you know Paul never had a wife? Do you know? Do you know? Now you know. I will tell you that Paul is a person, because of his physical appearance, Paul was a dwarf. And when you study history, Paul was not handsome. I will tell you, Paul was not handsome. I don't know if that's the reason he, ne he never had a wife. Paul was a dwarf, he was not, he was not handsome. When you even Google the, 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 the way people think Paul used to look, you will go and see for yourselves. And Paul is telling Timothy, because Paul endured, Paul, when he was in this world, there are two, people of, there are two kinds of people in this world. There are people who are living, and there are those who are surviving. Paul was neither. Paul was fighting, okay? Paul was fighting. That is why he was telling Timothy, I have fought the good. Praise be to God. Paul was a fighter. And Paul used to endure so that he could achieve his mission, his vision, purpose, and finally destiny in his life. Praise be to God. Paul is a person who really carried that cross of Christ. And that is why he is able to tell Timothy, even you, if you endure, you will reign with Christ. And I want us to, we have understood about the endurance of Paul. Now I want us to understand what Paul meant by reigning. When you are talking about having, the, the, having a life after this life, which you call the eternal life, people may think that it is just a life whereby we will just be living. But no, the studio team, please, to Rudishie, uh, 2 Timothy 2.12, it says, if we, no, the second part, we, if we endure, we will also reign with him. Not we will live with him, we will reign with him. And there is a very big difference between reigning and living. In our Kenyan context, there is a very big difference between mwananchi na mwenye weni gani. Mini mwananchi. Mini mwananchi. For now, mini mwananchi. And, and I want us to get the difference between living with Christ, li living in an eternal life, and reigning in that eternal life. When Paul is talking about that, you will reign with him. Who are you reigning with? You are reigning with Christ. And when Paul is talking about reigning, he's saying that you will share an administration with Christ himself. Isn't that good, Christians? Sharing an administration with Christ. I've never thought it in that aspect, but when I did a study concerning that book, it is not only living with Christ, not only having an eternal life, but it also have an aspect of sharing an administration with Christ and reigning with that Christ. Same case in Kenya. Monyenchi, monanchi. Wenenchi ndiona, those are the people who run the country, and then they are wananchi, we live in that country. Praise be to God. Christ being a person who carried the cross he himself, we can say that Christ is the perfect character and the first person who we can come and understand how he carried that cross. Christ is a person who carried his cross from the time that he had ascended here on earth up to his last breath on the cross. I will tell you, my dear brothers and sisters, that Christ, people argue if Christ is man or he is God. But I will tell you that there is both two aspects of Christ. There is the God side of Christ, and there is the manly side of Christ. Number one, Christ was not born like a man. Christ was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, not the normal conceiving. That shows that Christ had this nature in him of being a God. 
Christ had to leave his, his supremacy, he had to leave his deity, he had to leave his throne there in heaven so that he can come here and be born by a woman who is, who, a woman who is human, born in a very humble family of a carpenter. Christ lived like a man, Christ suffered like a man, Christ died like a man up to his last breath. I've told you that Christ had the godly side of him, the God side of him. He had the power to be born from the house of a king. He had the power to restrain the soldiers from crucifying him. But Christ he himself, he, he, he wanted to carry that cross. He wanted to carry that cross, praise be to God. Christ is a perfect character, a perfect example who we can learn of how he carried that cross. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1, Paul said, tells the Corinthians, be imitators, of, or be imitators of me just as I imitate Christ. In other terms, Paul was trying to tell the Corinthians, I want you to imitate the life of Christ. I want you to imitate how Christ lived. I want you to own the cross just as Christ owned the cross. Praise be to God. Tuko pamoja? Muna potea? Naongea haraka? Sawasawa. I want us to learn about three things that we can learn from Christ about owning the cross. Three things that we can only learn about Christ. As I told you, the best way to learn some, something is through someone who has experience. Christ was the first one to own the cross. Christ died because of, Christ died on that cross. He died for that cross so that we may have life. And I want us to learn three things. Number one, I will take only, nimebaksha, five minutes. Number one, I will talk about sacrifice. The book of Romans chapter 12 verse 1, studio team, Romans 12 verse 1. Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. So, Paul is talking to the church in Rome, and Paul is reminding these people that you have to offer yourselves, you have to offer your bodies, and you have to offer each and every aspect of you as a living sacrifice before God. And that is what Jesus did. Christ acted as a sacrifice. As we all know in the Old Testament, people used to sacrifice animals. But Christ comes in the New Testament, and he himself, he acts as that scapegoat that used to be sacrificed, and he acts as a sacrifice. It costed the life of Christ for him to be a sacrifice. It costed him removing the supremacy he had so that he can be sacrificed. It costed blood it costed flesh so that Christ can be sacrificed. But for us, that is not the kind of sacrifice that Christ wants for us. Christ wants us to just offer our hearts and offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. Christ was not a living sacrifice. Did he die on that cross? He gave his life. He gave his life totally. But us is not just giving our, 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 our life in, a, in, in this aspect that we may die but it is giving the life that we are living in to Christ, offering our bodies as living sacrifice. Rudisha, uh, Romans 12.1. I want us to read the last part. Romans 12.1. I want you to read up after the, up in a sema, this is your true. Yes, read that part. This is, this is your true and proper worship. Paul talks to the Corinthians, to the Romans, and tells them, offering your bodies, offering your lives of living sacrifice, this is the true and proper worship. As Christians, our duty to God is to worship. And Paul has said, the true and proper worship is offering ourselves to God as living sacrifice. Just as Christ sacrificed his life, even us, let us sacrifice the life that we have so that we can live for that Christ. That is one thing that we can run, learn about Christ, about enduring to owning the cross. Praise be to God. Number two, I want to talk about having a stand and a firm foundation in your life. Matthew chapter 7, 24 to 27. Matthew 7, 24 to 27. Point number one, I've said about offering yourself as a living sacrifice. Point number two, having a stand and a firm foundation 
in your faith. Matthew 7, 24 to 27. Studio. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. Next. The rain came down and stream rose and the winds blew and beat again the house and it fell with a great crash. I want us to talk about having a stand and having a firm foundation in your faith. Jesus gives a parable about these two group of people. One person, he builds his house on sand. And then the other person, he builds his house on a rock. And when the wind came, when the rains came, when the streams of waters came, the person who had built his house on sand, the house got swept away. And the reason why that, that house got swept away, it beca it's, it's because it never had that farm foundation. Was the foundation firm? No. And Jesus equates this kind of person, the person who builds his house on sand, as like a person who hears the word of God and does not follow that word. But you who hears the word of God and live according to that word, you are like a person who has built his house on a rock. Praise be to God. Those who hear the word of God, those who hear obey and follow the word of God, they have, they have a firm foundation in their life. Praise, praise be to God. And Jesus, he himself, now can you turn to Matthew chapter 4? Jesus, he himself, he set an example of this parable when he was in the wilderness, when the time, during the time that he was being tempted. I want, us, I want you to give me chapter, verse 3 to 4. Verse 3 to 4. We all know those temptations, so Tazipiti Azote, Matthew 4, give me verse 3, not verse 1, verse 3. Matthew chapter 4, verse 3. Yeah, verse 3. That is the first temptation that Christ encountered. The tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Number 4, Jesus said, it is written. Jesus never said that worship the Lord your God only. Jesus said, it is written. That is because Jesus knew that word and he was living according to that word. Because he was living according to that word, that is, a, that is why he, he is able to have that stand and that is why he has a firm foundation in his Christ that whatever the tempter brings, it is not able to bring him down. Praise be to God. Temptation number two, that is verse... Mm -hmm. Verse 6, Matthew 4, verse 6. Verse, Matthew 4, verse 6, it says, If you are the Son of God, he said, Throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift up their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Verse, verse 7. Jesus answered him, It is also, I want you to understand, Christ is using the word of God, him being, a God, him being God the Son, he's using the word of God as a guide and as a shield because his faith is built upon that word of God. And that is why he's saying in the book of Matthew chapter 7, those who hear the word of God are like, a, are like a house built on a stone. Sometimes you go, sometimes you know there are things that you encounter and you, you go, you go rebuking the devil with your own power. I like to urge you Christians, Christ never rebuked the devil with, him, with his own thinking, with his own strength. But he was using the word of all the temptations. Christ used to say, it is written. The word of God builds our foundation. The word of God is a pillar, is what can help us to have a stand in our Christian life, praise be to God. We sing a song and says, On Christ the solid rock I stand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking. 
ki sana nataka tuone kaa tuko pamoja number one, about owning the clothes i said you must sacrifice number two, i said you have you must have a stand and a firm foundation and the last one two minutes so that you can own that cross so that you can carry that cross of christ which is not an easy cross to carry we all know as christians it is not an easy cross to carry even paul he himself says the body is wanting, but the spirit is. Praise be to God. Carrying the cross of Christ is not easy. Lastly, you need to be contented with that cross. You need to be contented with that cross. The last thing is being contented with the cross of Christ. Praise be to God. What, what do I mean by being contented with the cross of Christ? When Christ was about to be crucified, when he was arrested, Peter took a sword and he cut an ear of a soldier. But what did Christ do? Take the ear, put it back. I told you that Christ had the power that he needed. He's a God. He's a God. I will remind you that Christ was an immortal being in the body of a mortal being. Christ was immortal. He's a God. You cannot kill a God. But Christ was contented, contented enough to die on the cross. That is why even Christ tells these people, says, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. Christ had the power. He had all that he needed to remove himself from the cross. But he was contented being at the cross because he knew the price is even greater than what, than what he was passing through. Rudisha, Romans, no, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 12. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 12. If we endure with him, Christians, if we, if we disown him, he will also disown us. Christ, when he was at the cross, he was enduring so that he may have life. Christ came so that he may have life and have it in abundance. Not only life. And the abundance, the abundance of life, it entails three things. Fullness of, the, of the, fullness of the body, fullness of the soul, and fullness of the spirit. That is what God, that is what Christ meant by having abundance of life. The book of John chapter 4 verse 9 tells us that Christ showed us, that God showed us his love by letting his one and only son come and die for us. And it is up to us, us as Christians. Christ, God had that great love inside him. Christ was ready to carry that cross. Are you ready to carry that cross of Christ? Christ died for that cross. Christians, are you ready to live for that cross? Are you ready to carry that cross? Are you ready to own that cross of Christ? Number one, I've talked about sacrifice. Number two, having a firm foundation. And number three, being contented at the cross. I want us to stand up. I want us to rise. And think about that cross that is being subjected to us that we carry in our lives. I want you to, clo to close your eyes and meditate and think about that cross of Christ, what Christ had to go through so that he can own that Christ, that cross. For you, you just need to sacrifice yourself as a living sacrifice. Give yourself as a living sacrifice. Have a firm foundation for your faith. And lastly, be, con be contented with that cross. As you sing this song, I have more than a song. I want you to think about that love. I want you to think about that cross that we have to carry in our lives. song today I brought myself I am the sacrifice I am more than a song today I brought myself I am your wash I am more than a song I am more than a 
sacrifice unto God. I want you to ask yourself, are we really ca carrying the cross of Christ? Are we just carrying our own cross, but you are forgetting that there is a cross of Christ that you have been subjected to carry? Are you forgetting that there is a foundation that is in Christ, that whatever passes through our ways, we cannot be put down? I want us to ask ourselves, am I contented being at the cross? The cross has a lot of pain. The cross will lead us to endure. The carrying the cross of Christ is not easy, but it will get easier if you are walking under grace through the pain of God. Maybe there is one or two this morning that you feel convicted that it's your time to start carrying that cross of Christ. Maybe there are one or two of you maybe three, four, or ten of you that had let their crosses down and you want to take that cross of Christ and carry it. I won't ask you to come forward, but I will ask you in faith to go before the Lord. In faith, go before the Lord and call upon the name of the Lord. Even us who have already given our lives to Christ, go before the Lord and pray that he may give you the strength that you may endure carrying the cross. Carrying the cross calls for endurance, Christians. Carrying the cross calls for endurance. The cross is not easy. The cross is not easy. Repeat these words after me. Everlasting Father, we call upon your holy name. We call upon your strength. We call upon your grace and your mercies. We may have failed to carry your cross. We may have failed to carry the cross of Christ. But because your grace is unending, because your grace covers our shame, because your grace covers our scars, I pray that may that grace that brings salvation be upon my heart, be upon my mind, be upon my body, and be upon each and every aspect of me. Help me to endure, O oh Lord, for the honor and glory of your holy name. Amen. God bless you. Ah, the cross, ah, the cross, where I found so the light. 
Appreciate him. Thank you so much for the word of God. And thank you for this far that we have come. And at this time, I want to welcome all those who have their prayers to come over and place it here. Those who have their prayers, as our church warden prepare himself for what he has for us before we cross. So if you have your pledge with you, please press it here. Thanks. Um, we were to have another session for going through our strategic plan, but because of the interest of time, please allow us to do it on Sunday in a more elaborate and a planned way. However, I'll speak about three things about strategic planning. Uh, so that even as you go out, you are able to uh, go through it, know what is a strategic plan, and so on and so forth. Uh, we were able to raise for our great Babinos here 31,480 shillings. So we received 16,350 in cash. We received 15,130 through M-Pesa, and that money will at least make them go up to Mochito one day. So the rest of the cash, we will get it from Kikuyu service so that we are able to take them then to, to Mombasa. Sawa, sawa. But well done, appreciate yourself. So um, in our church here, you are a member, yes? And we have a strategic plan. A strategic plan is a process, actually is a document that helps guide our church for the next five years. Why strategic planning? Strategic planning helps us to be focused, to know where we are, how we will get there, and what are the plans that we have for this church. So please, I will be able to elaborate more on Sunday. But as your assignment, go and study our strategic plan. We'll make it available on our WhatsApp groups so that you are able to understand what is this that we've been speaking about. What is a strategic plan? What is the process of strategic planning? What are the key pillars? What is our vision? What is our mission? Vision, how do we get there? What is our mission? What are our core values? What values determine the way we operate in the church? How do we manage to say that this is our project, this is our plan? How do we get there? So those are the things that we shall be discussing on Sunday. But for now, I want you to go and ask yourself, number one, what is a strategic planning? What comes out of the strategic planning? How do we plan the strategy? We already went through that process, and we have a document for us that will guide this church for the next five years. We started in 2022, and therefore, as we go through the strategic planning and what elements we have. They are called the key pillars. We have the pillars that, uh, that will help us achieve our strategic goals. I don't know where some of you are born when you are talking about millennium goals. How many were, you, were there? I don't know. How many have ever heard of uh, Vision 2030? Vision 2030, at least that one we hear. Maybe not all of you, but now we have now our strategic plan for 2022-2026 for ACK St. Peter's Gasharage. So as we define, as we go through the strategic planning, because of the interest of time we are unable to do that today, please go and start asking yourself, what are these things that we should do as a church to make us achieve our level optimum? Thank you and God bless you. Once again, appreciate yourself for the great work you've done for our children. Thank you so much, our church. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank you all 
for making this service very life-free. Our studio team, Kimathi and our brother there, thank you so much, our Grace Voices, for reading us so well. Thank you so much for each and everyone who came to this service. We will recognize you and we thank God for you. Now we are going to stand as we will come our Lady Emily to say our final prayer. Let us all pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful, O oh God. Here in front of us is what your children has brought in form of tithe, in form of poetry, O oh God. We pray that you may bless them, O oh God. Bless them as they go out, as they come in. Bless their sources, O oh Father. They have brought this for the fatherance and, uh, and the, for your kingdom, O oh God. Continue blessing the work of their hands. Continue blessing them, my Father, in whatever they do so that they may continue to come with these gifts, and gifts, my Father, in your house, so that in your kingdom, your house, may, have, may never lack. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and believe. Amen. Now turn to your neighbor, greet him or her, and let us all smile to him or her, and let us as join together uh, your hands. Let us say the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you so much. Have a blessed week. And our ushers, please make sure that our pupils and our teacher get a cup of tea and a kasnak. Let us have our recession over him. Eneza Habari. Eneza habari umu duniani popo tepana po moyo wa huzuni dimbi za wa Kristo sita gazeno yupo mfariji yupo you pour for it, Roho Takatifu, the anxiety. It is a habari, O Muduniani. You pour for it, Ame Wawa Kone. Thank 
chaze na shuka nitele upendo wa bwana ujulike sana yupo fariji yupo fariji yupo Oh, 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 oh,